We're in the June Odd 8 exam. We're now on page 8, question 41. The diagram below represents two concurrent forces. These are two forces acting on the same object. The resultant of those two forces would be something like this. So that would be the resultant. If you didn't have these two forces, you could replace them with this single force. It would do the same thing, pulling it upwards and pulling it to the left. Which vector represents the force that will produce equilibrium with these two forces? So equilibrium is achieved when they're balanced. So if this is the resultant, a force going in the opposite direction would produce equilibrium. So we're looking for that force. And number one would be the resultant. Two doesn't make any sense. Three would produce equilibrium. Four doesn't make any sense. So the correct answer has to be three. Question 42. Which graph best represents the relationship between the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration and the speed of an object moving in a circular a circle of constant radius. Well, let's start off with the equation. Centripetal acceleration is right about here, v squared over r. All right. So centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. Constant radius, so this stays the same. So basically, what's the relationship between acceleration centripetal and velocity? Well, velocity is squared. So we can put in some pretend numbers. If velocity is 1, acceleration centripetal would be 1. If velocity was 2, centripetal acceleration would be 4. 3 would be 9. So if we're to make a little graph of that, acceleration and velocity, speed, as this goes up, this goes up a lot. So we're kind of looking for that graph. And that would be acceleration would be the same. Centripetal acceleration decreases with speed. That doesn't make sense. There's the graph we're looking for. And there would be just a straight line. So here we go. There's the correct answer. And question 43. The diagram below represents two masses before and after they collide. Before the collision, mass A is moving to the right with the speed of V, and mass B is at rest. Upon collision, the two masses stick together. Which expression represents V prime to the masses after the collision? All right, let's look at this. This has got momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity. So we'll call that mass A times velocity. Mass B has no momentum, so this would be zero. So before the collision, the total momentum will be mass A times velocity. After the collision, it will have to be the same momentum. So the momentum afterwards is going to be mass A times velocity. Uh, but we have to add to that mass B. So if momentum is mass times velocity, then velocity is going to be equal to momentum divided by mass. So if the momentum was mass A times velocity, the mass afterward is mass A plus mass B, then uh, I think the velocity afterwards has got to be equal to mass A times velocity divided by mass A plus B. Let's go see if we can find that. Choice one, mass A plus, well, mass B had no momentum, so that can't be it. Mass A plus mass B divided by mass AV. Well, that's uh, the reciprocal of what I'm looking for. 
Again, mass B had no momentum. And here it is, mass A times V, the momentum before, divided by the total mass. That looks like the right answer.